With over 25 years of experience providing high-quality cardiovascular ultrasound education to physicians and technologists, the Pacific Vascular Institute for Continuing Medical Education offers a comprehensive four-day course in vascular ultrasound. This course is offered at Pacific Vascular's headquarters in the Seattle suburb of Bothell, Washington. Taught through lectures featuring actual case studies, ample time is set aside for practical hands-on scanning of live models. Participants will learn techniques for detecting and quantifying disease in the carotid arteries, peripheral arteries and veins, abdominal aorta, renal arteries and kidneys. Interpretive skills are developed through case presentations and interpretation sessions. The course offers a comprehensive overview, from the patient's referral, clinical history, physical assessment, to the final interpretation. Some of the major topics covered in this course include vascular anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology, duplex scanning of the extracranial arterial circulation, duplex scanning of the lower extremity arteries and veins, duplex scanning of the renal arteries, and the criteria necessary to interpret pathology cases. Participants may enroll in specific sections of interest or for the complete four-day series. This course is designed for cardiologists, echocardiographers, radiologists, radiology sonographers, and those cross-training in vascular ultrasound. Both Category 1 and SVU CME credit are offered. That's an abnormal waveform. Suggesting there's something going on, not in the vertebral, but in the subclavian artery on that same side. Then you can have a situation where it's actually crossing the baseline, but then continuing. So it's going towards the brain. It's actually then being siphoned away from the brain at a certain point, and then it's going back in its normal flow direction. So that's an alternating signal, and that's indicating something slightly worse than that signal. If you see anything like this in a vertebral, you know that there's some issue. Now this is where this is the linear probe, and where it gets a little difficult to show proximal segments. Same with your when you're imaging your carotid, right? You do the whole heel toe of the probe. You do the same thing with this, and still on the jugular, you want this to come down again as far proximal as you can. This is where I actually switch to what we call the S4. To some, this is a cardiac probe, to others, it's an abdominal probe. Either way, it has a smaller footprint and greater depth penetration. This is why I use this to look at the anomaly. So again, identifying the jugular, following it as proximal as I can. I'm already hitting her clavicle here, putting that into long axis, and then just dipping that probe down. I'm trying to get as far proximal as I can. This is where, like, when, remember when I said it's very difficult to get any kind of feed mode characteristic here, so you can't necessarily rule out non-occlusive DVT. For additional information or to register for this course, please go to www.pvicme.com or call 425-398-7772.